Hi, welcome everyone. And my name is Deanna Moffat and I'll be your host today for our customer spotlight program featuring Jassy Software. Now I already know, I've heard these gentlemen, this is going to be great. We're gonna hear firsthand from their CEO and co-founder Craig Walensky. We're celebrating our customers at the heart of today's Virtual Customer Spotlight series. It's an exciting new forum brought to you by Oracle customers who want to share how our cloud solutions are helping them see data in new ways, discover new insights, and unlock endless possibilities. Over the next hour, you'll have the opportunity to learn from and exchange ideas and best practices with our speakers and your peers in a unique virtual format. So before we get started, you know, there's a few housekeeping notes. So at this time, all of you are in listen-only mode, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. Our goal is to have you learn from each other. So with that, we encourage you to ask questions using the Q&A tool. It's at the bottom of your Zoom main menu, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the program. We'll also be rolling a few polling questions so that we can better understand what is on your mind. You can submit them anonymously if you wish, but we do encourage you to be open and share your thoughts so we can learn from each other. So let's go ahead and practice. Let's test out our polling skills and see how we want to answer these questions. First one, let's make it easy. What type of Zoomer are you? Are you the one walking around the house? The one without the camera on? The one with a fun virtual background? Uh, how about the one making funny faces or maybe like me, the one who just woke up. Let's see what your responses are. Ah, so the one without the camera on. I get it, I get it. Uh, great, well thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get this started then. I would love to introduce our Oracle Executive Host, Steve Dehebe, Senior Vice President, Oracle Cloud. Thanks, Deanna, uh, really appreciate it. Love the intro. So look, before we get started, I wanted to set the stage for today's session with some brief market observations. As we watch the world change before our eyes, we remain more focused than ever on supporting our customers. In every way, it's about enabling them during this really unprecedented time of change. And through our technology, we can help our customers reinvent and reemerge stronger than ever before. Now, today, organizations want certainty, trust, and help. Industries are experiencing new realities and economic uncertainty. Businesses from startups to large enterprises are reacting to changing behaviors and adapting to rise above these challenges. In operating anywhere, the need for elasticity and rapid innovation creates urgency for the cloud. It's all about increasing the resiliency both now and in the future, helping our customers to be resilient during this time and really any time, and enabling them to thrive as they move forward. And we'll hear from Craig how he's doing that with his business. Look at Oracle, we're no stranger to supporting mission critical work. For decades, we've been doing that work that keeps businesses up and running and allows them to innovate and excel. This is something we've always done and something we will continue to do during this time and beyond. So today our customers are reimagining and reinventing their businesses to lead them to a successful future. Their imperatives may include addressing the current economic impact whether that's load balancing within your spend and prioritizing it on those things that are most important to your business or just dealing with the overall economic situation. Ensuring business continuity, uh, enabling remote working, engaging with employees and customers in UA, enabling rapid solution development and digital acceleration that is more important than ever. How do we rapidly develop and deploy solutions to market and finally, informing our decisions through predictive insights via data and analytics. So with that, you know, let's get to the second polling question. You know, we'd love to hear from you. What's your primary concern or imperative that you're looking for to address? Is it the economic imperatives? Is it ensuring business continuity? Is it finding new ways to engage with employees? Enabling digital acceleration, providing informed insights, looking to adopt the analytics, providing cloud elasticity, security, and automation. Is it something we don't have on this list? Um, or is it all of these things? So again, we love to hear from you. Um, you know, and it, it, what we hear from you, it, you know, informs our direction and what we do as a company. And so your feedback, you know, is critically important. 
Well, by an overwhelming amount, you either have providing elasticity, security, and automation, which I think Craig will talk about because there's things we can do with cloud we weren't able to do before. Um, and I love seeing all the above as well. I think that's actually pretty important. So now before I introduce our special guest on my good friend, Craig, we've done this a few times together and I'm really thankful that he's here today. Let's take a quick look at a video which will provide a bit of a background on JASPY. Let's roll the video. JASPY is a next generation cloud platform to modernize supply chains. To meet the expectations of our customers of speed, efficiency, and reliability, we implemented Oracle's Autonomous Transaction Processing Database. Some of the performance improvements we're seeing leveraging the ATP database platform have been phenomenal. 100 times performance improvements. Database performance is critical to our customers as we may be driving complex AI decisions at the transactional level that needs to be done in milliseconds. We may be communicating to real-time workforces or robotics that are waiting for responses. We are seeing results of being able to process twice as many orders with half the labor in the same amount of time. Instead of managing databases and infrastructure, we're now able to focus our attention on building and innovating new levels of technology. God, I, I love that video. Um, some amazing stats in there too that I know we'll get into. So I'd like to welcome Craig Walensky, founder and CEO of Jasky. Thank you for joining us. Craig, it'd be great if you could take time to provide more of a background on your role, the company, Jasky, some of the challenges you have faced and how we've been working together to help address those. So thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks for the invite uh, to tell our story today. Uh, haven't seen you in a while. Last time we saw you is in Seattle. Yeah. I'm Hopefully old. we can do that again in the near future. We'll see what happens. I hope so. And, uh, and also thanks all the viewers for, for chiming in here. We're going to tell the story today and maybe it'll be reflect, you can reflect on some of the things we're talking about. Uh, so, so I'm Craig Walensky, CEO and co-founder of Jassy Software. Jassy is a SaaS based logistics platform. Uh, SaaS means software as a service, and we run as a single platform uh, globally uh, for, for companies running fulfillment operations, uh, distribution centers, uh, warehouses, if you will, things that move goods. Um, logistics is mission critical. Anybody, anybody on the phone who runs logistics centers here or anyone on the, on the webinar here will know that it is the heart of most companies, businesses that move product today. Uh, some of the things that are mission critical, you know, in our platform to our customers, they want it fast, they want it sub-second, they want it reliable, they want it secure, and they want to be able to scale. And uh, as a SaaS software company, we needed a partner. So we had to pick a cloud partner to work with, and we actually ended up working with Oracle for a lot of reasons that we'll go through today. But one of the key parts that we'll hear about in our discussions today is platform as a service. So we're a SaaS company, software as a service, they're a platform as a service, and we'll go through what that means today, but it's a really important piece in choosing a cloud provider, especially for us, because Oracle does what they do well, which is managing the cloud, managing the database, giving us the best tools available for our customers, and we get to focus on, on our cutting edge software, which is our, our, our software as a service for our customers. So let's go through what the SaaS platform really is running on the Oracle cloud today. So we are a SaaS platform for logistics. We work with e-commerce companies, retailers, 3PLs, which are third-party logistics customer, uh, customers that do work on behalf of others, and consumer goods companies, things you use in your everyday lives, whether it's food, uh, whether it's healthcare, whatever that is, those are consumer goods. And in our platform running on the Oracle cloud today, we have a warehouse management platform that manages the fulfillment centers, manages all the inventory, uh, we have an order execution system, so as orders are hitting, the system is smartly deciding what orders to perform on. We have a robotic system built in, and what we call is a WCS, which is these conveyor systems that move product more efficiently throughout the process. We have shipping management, a big component in the cost of how people operate today, and an analytics platform and labor management. But it's actually an interesting story on the analytics. 
we actually started building out some of our analytics and hard coding them. And that was one of the benefits of working with, with Oracle. They had a phenomenal analytic platform, their cloud analytics, and they had a data warehouse. <laughs> so we took the data uh, and offered to our customers the ability to actually have a data warehouse and leverage their next gen tools for analytics, visualizations, and, and reporting of their data. And data mining is an important piece because think about all the data that we're capturing. Uh, think about, we know who the customers are in our platform. We know where we ship to, what we ship, products. All that stuff is being housed in our platform. And we had to give our customers an easy way to access that data and perform their own visualizations and reporting on it. So what are the key things that our customers are looking for? Number one is flexibility. The ability to adapt and change for markets to facilitate growth and expansion. So what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, we're seeing that right now. I mean, it's been terrible what happened over the last several months. Uh, companies usually had the ability uh, to change over, over months and years. Uh, never did they have to change and morph their businesses in, in weeks. And that's what's been happening. Uh, so one of the biggest things we solve in our platform is the flexibility to change uh, as the business changes or as economic things happen, which we're seeing right now. Uh, speed. Working at the speed of today's commerce and the expectations um, is paramount. This thing has to be sub-second, sub-tenth of a second to make these decisions. Uh, we're making complex uh, machine learning. We're looking at massive amounts of data to provide real-time decision making, getting away from manual decisions, which provides that speed. Efficiency. We have to do more with less, less labor. We have to increase space. As consumers, as all everyone on this line, we buy stuff online. We want the biggest selection possible. It's a challenge for our customers because then they have to fit more SKUs. Um, if they have a, a, a smaller amount of SKUs in their facility, well, their revenue goes down. If they have a greater amount of SKUs in their facilities, well, then they have a potential to grow their business. So it's how we maximize that space. Uh, building new buildings can take a long time. It can take a year to two years uh, to put up a new facility and very costly. But if we manage the current facilities better, they may not have to move. Scale, modularity, the ability to handle your peaks and your valleys, uh, elastic cloud to power the growth, ability to have be a medium-sized company and grow large or start off small and grow big. This is all about scale. Another one of the reasons why we work with um, the Oracle Autonomous Database and, and their cloud today. So we have deep supply chain experience. Well, I mentioned before, it is mission critical. So our team has tremendous experience. Uh, we built other platforms, other supply chain platforms before, but they were server-based platforms. And those server-based platforms were what we call hard-coded. <laughs> and they took months and years and cost a lot of money uh, to make. Now, some of, we worked with some of the world's biggest companies out there in our careers, and what we took was lessons learned. How do we create an easier, more agile way for them to run their businesses? Not only agile, but how do we facilitate their growth? How do we you know, uh, facilitate you know, their cost structures? How do we have them be flexible to handle their business changes? So we took all those lessons learned, and we built a next-gen platform to handle that, designed for logistics professionals. On top of designing for logistics professionals, we wanted people to continuously optimize without limitations, uh, keep on enhancing their business and coming up with better process. We wanted them to have the better speed, efficiency, and accuracy, honestly, to compete in this open market. Uh, com competition is tough. Um, and as we all know, uh, the best survive. So that's what, that's what our job is to do today. So one of our key inventions is just that. We, we invented a new platform uh, called Smart Task Workflow. It's a workflow engine for logistics. Um, it's the first system of its kind in our market segment. Why did we create it? After all the lessons learned of working with all these companies and their challenges, we realized that the key challenge was the hard coding going on, not being able to design process on the fly. So we built the industry's first workflow platform that allows you to design process without coding. You know, think about what it was like before. We, any changes you made were typically required coding. Those coding projects can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. 
imagine being able to do coding changes now, or no coding changes, be able to do process changes within minutes or hours uh, versus weeks and months. It also helps us with speedy implementations. Customers have to move faster. They have to implement quicker. They need projects easier. And that's what this facilitates as well. They can continuously optimize because as they, as they use workflow, they can always come up with new ideas and change those workflows on the fly. It also, in, it also has machine learning. These workflows are smart. As you operate, it's learning. Uh, even the robotics are learning, uh, believe it or not. As we task robots, the system's learning best path, all these different things and providing these through the workflows. It's an interesting thing here. Um, the robotics and also people are all tasked the same way. We treat everyone autonomously, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So what does this sit on? What is, what is the infrastructure? How did we do this? And that's one of the keys is choosing the right partner as well. Uh, so we have a SaaS cloud architecture and what is it? it it's an entire single platform. It's multi-tenant, multi-company, multi-site in 80 languages. It's totally elastic. It's elastic from the compute power all the way to the database, which we'll talk about in a little bit on the ATP side. We need to buy on our customers best in class service levels, 99.9% .9 guaranteed service levels. That means the system cannot go down. We need redundancies, we need disaster recoveries, we need this system always maintained. Downtime is not an option in logistics. Security, we're holding sensitive data. Security is a big thing from denial of service to encrypting your data. And that's what we built together. You know, in this where we have the maximum security that protects access, connections, and data within the cloud. And as part of the structure, we have both production and UAT uh, systems for our customers. So they can test before going to production with all these changes that they want to do and the workflows, which is a great flexibility for them, all within the same cloud environment. Uh, so again, I said it takes a partner. We work very closely together at the engineering level. And this is a big thing. It was a big thing for us. Uh, we need someone to talk to. <laughs> we need someone to work with us. Um, it can't just be by email. I mean, we're dealing with mission critical customers and applications, and we've got to be able to work with a partner. And it, this has really been that. And in 2019, Oracle recognized Jassy as a Cloud Innovator of the Year um, at Open World. And Larry, uh, thank you. Uh, Larry included us in the keynote speech um, at Oracle Open World as well. That's fantastic. I really appreciate the overview. I know everybody does. So now for the fun part of the discussion. Not that that wasn't fun, but <laughs> let's get into it. You know, We want the audience to learn more from your journey. So I have a few questions I want to ask just to dig in a little bit deeper. You know, sure. As I mentioned, we're currently experiencing an unprecedented amount of change in the industry. You talked about that as well. You know, what used to be months and years now needs to be done in days and weeks. Um, and now more than ever, customer experience is on the line and every second counts, right? You need speed, you need efficiency, you need accuracy to deliver on your customer's expectations, which are greater and really more demanding than ever. To your point, they're looking for somebody to talk to and work with. So Craig, can you talk about your business strategy, the trends you're seeing? and outline how you've had to adapt in these recent months. Well, unfortunately, it's unfolding, you know, right now in front of us. We, none of us had anticipated what's happening uh, today, and we're all having to adapt. Uh, even, think about consumers today. Many consumers never even ordered online. <laughs> you know, they went to stores, they ordered on, they never, they never needed to. And now even those consumers have learned uh, to order online, and now it's a reality here to stay for, for a long time. And our customers and, and prospective customers are, that we work with also have to facilitate that change. Um, a lot of them have, you know, a technology that they've used for years that has worked well for them, and now all of a sudden they're having to rapidly adapt, and those technology stacks don't allow them to do it. So yes, we've been working closely, round the clock, actually our team, and I got to thank our team on the call here. Uh, they've been they've been really helping these customers round the clock. And when I say round the clock, this is global. This isn't just a a North America. This is throughout the globe right now. So our software is helping them adapt, but our team is as well. You know, to meet these new challenges, I think we're going to see, you know, 
uh, customers that may have been holdouts even of, of server-based systems in their data centers are realizing in order to adapt to what's happening, they have to look at new levels of computing and different ways to do it. And we are seeing that unfold. I'm sure the Oracle team is seeing that on their side as well. Also, we're seeing a, a rapid adaption of machine learning and AI technology because all these changes, it, it's too hard to do manually. You can't. I mean, imagine trying to figure all this out manually, uh, trying, to, trying to make manual decisions. So we have to keep on getting better in machine learning and AI to do real-time decision making. You know, in our platform, we're, um, we're handling robots. You know, uh, they're autonomous. You know, we have to make real-time decisions to tell them what to do, uh, to tell people what to do. They all work together. How do we make them work together? You know, it's not one or the other. There will always be, you know, a balance. And in order to make this work, honestly, we've been, we've been really leaning on Oracle a lot. Um, the, the platform that we have there has made a world of difference, you know, in how, how we work. You know, instead of us focusing on, oh, my gosh, we got to provision another server. Oh, we got we to gotta make the database bigger. Oh, how do we react to this? Uh, the cloud system is reacting on its own. It's actually amazing. Uh, it's elastic. And it's just acting on its own. And our company is just totally focused right now on just cutting edge software. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. I mean, these are new emerging technologies like AI, machine learning, and maybe specifically regarding the impact they've had on supply chain management. Can you sort of describe your use of autonomous and your implementation? Yeah, there's, there's two pieces of autonomous. <laughs> One is we're leveraging an autonomous uh, platform as a service. I mean, the database, um, and uh, it's not meant to be a commercial, but the Oracle uh, ATP database is autonomous. Uh, it actually runs on its own. Oracle manages it for us. Um, Oracle does the updates. Um, it does auto patching, security. It's auto elastic. And this is key for us as well. Well, you know, I, you know in terms of definitions of autonomous, it auto scales for us. When our customers have peak periods, it'll grow in size on its own. And then when they get slower, it auto sizes back down. Uh, we like that from a cost perspective. Uh, the customers like that to handle their peaks and their valleys and their costs as well. So really a platform before, whereas before, we had to actually determine what we thought the size was gonna be. And we've had instances where we're like, okay, let's put up a bare metal server of this size and let's put the database on there. Oh no, we grew out of capacity. What do we do now? There was no way to, to make it elastic. And this thing has really changed our lives. And also human error, you know, was a big thing for us. Uh, when we have pe humans touching the databases and not that they're not qualified, just people make mistakes sometimes, you know, and, and that can have a dramatic impact to our customers. There are mission critical applications. You know, if there is, so if there is something done wrong in that database, um, it could impact not only a customer, but all the customers on the platform. So that's some of the things we, we were looking at. And yes, machine learning, decision making, even at the database level for indexing and, and patching and all the things that it does, tremendous. And it's actually working today. <laughs> Believe it or not, it makes me sleep better. Um, you know, I've had, I've had sleepless nights, you know, sometimes in, in the past. <laughs> now that we moved over to this, I know it's all being taken care of. And honestly, we're making technology decisions on, the, on behalf of our customers. As a SaaS software company, it's our job to pick the platform. So we pick the platform and we had to provide best in class technology for our customers, uh, regardless, that's our job in a mission critical application. And think about ours, we're an autonomous system. I mean, we're making autonomous decisions, you know, uh, real time. And it's actually amazing, uh, the algorithms that are running, um, you know, in these facilities. I mean, as soon as you place an order online, no one, no one has to look at that order. It just, it'll automatically pop up to a robot or it'll automatically pop up to a person. I mean, think about the speed now. It'll prioritize. It'll say, no, I don't have to do this one right now. I can do this one later, but this one I got to do right now. How does a person do that on their own? Yeah, no, it's incredible. Um, yeah, and I love the, you know, the idea of true elasticity, pay for what you use reduce human administration, reduce human error. I mean, there, it's, the value prop's amazing. And I'd love to ask you about an you know, autonomous database and really the, 
top value benefits you've experienced. You know, the video, you have some pretty compelling stats as well. Can you sort of take us through how you're measuring that and what you're seeing? Well, I get a lot more sleep now. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> uh, literally. Um, so uh, some of the things are incredible. Think about what, I'm, what we're powering. We're powering, you know, we just looked in our, we just looked the other day, we're doing billions of database reads, billions. You know, it's phenomenal amount of transactions. Think about robots as they go along. Do you know every, every like few feet we're pulling the robot and doing transactions with it in real time? It's a massive amount of, massive amount of transactions that we're doing on the platform and we needed a database that was gonna keep up and that was gonna be our limiting factor. Honestly, we could not grow it became a factor of can we grow the SaaS company without a database like that? So what have we seen so far? We've seen a hundred X performance gain. Now we were on Oracle before we were on Oracle database on a bare metal server. So I don't know the secret sauce of what <laughs> Oracle put together there, but we're, we've seen a hundred X performance uh, gains on this new platform. It's just amazing. Even with same amount of cores, same amount of memory, you know, all those things are just amazing. Uh, we've also seen a 20x uh, compute power gain. Now, how do we see that? Somehow the database is feeding the, the servers, the VMs, uh, the cores faster. And because it's all just feeding it so quickly, we're just seeing tremendous uh, performance. Our system is averaging, uh, in most cases, about a tenth of a second transaction time to on the floor. I mean, that is incredibly fast. In some cases, we're seeing 20 milliseconds you know, response time you know, to those transactions, definitely needed. So those are the key. Uh, zero maintenance was a really big one for us, <laughs> by the way. Uh, zero maintenance on our side. We don't do indexes. We don't do any of those things anymore. The system's just doing it on its own. Security patches are done by Oracle. Here's one of the biggest things. I don't think, I don't think Oracle talks about this, but our database does not go down for maintenance. Um, that system, this is a big benefit because then I have to put into my service levels. If we had to take down the database for maintenance, think about the service level changes I'd have to do. I cannot offer 99.9% .9 service levels to our customers. Okay. Yeah. Really big impacts. Um, and we've done this together as a team, you know, really learning about the platform, putting it together, managing it, you know, throughout the entire process. And it takes a team effort. No, it's fantastic. So final question, you know, you're talking about autonomous and the, the role it could play, you know, what is it helping you do today that you couldn't do before? And, and how do you view it in terms of your long-term future? Well, uh, I can take, I mean, today, honestly, this is the real truth with autonomous. I can literally take on any customer of any size. And that was a concern of ours. How big, how many transactions can we do? How fast would this be? What if I took on one of the largest retailers in the world or e-commerce companies or manufacturers? Could this system keep up with it? And that was the limiting factor. We have a serverless architecture on our software where it's totally parallel. There's no limit to the amount of VMs that we use simultaneously. We leverage you, the load balancers at Oracle and it load balances the load and it all works in parallel. That's great, but if you don't have a database that can power that, if the database is gonna hiccup and not be able to handle those transactions, then I'd only be working with small and medium companies. Uh, here's, a, here's a real live use case. Uh, we started working with very large company, very large retailer, and we did a load test for them. We loaded hundreds of thousands of orders, hundreds of thousands of orders, and they said, let's see how fast you can process that and how quick, the, and what's the response time. So we did a whole load test and we, we actually did it across uh, eight, eight VMs in the cloud just to do this load test. We processed 92,000 orders an hour, e-com orders an hour, and maintained a 122 millisecond response time, so just a little more than a tenth of a second. If that database couldn't keep up, there's just no way we would be able to process that. So, and so again, to us, it's about growth. Yeah. You know, it's about being able to handle any company of any size or letting a small or medium company grow within the platform. They don't have to worry that all of a sudden their system is going to be slow. Uh, all of a sudden I can't meet the demands of my customers. Think about this. This is, this is actually a, a, a realistic number. If our system takes several seconds to respond, 
you know, I don't know if you know what the impact is to the customers. Um, they have, they may have to hire 20 to 50% more people just by response time going to two or three seconds, four seconds means they have to add more staff, you know, to do the same amount of work. Yeah, no, incredible. You know, thank you so much for providing all this really amazing insight into Jasky and highlighting the work we've been doing together. Now let's find out, you know, more from those on the call today around their adoption of cloud. Um, so we have our third poll. Um, what are the driving factors in adopting cloud for your business? There's data security, there's AI and machine learning, process automation, migration of legacy apps, big data and analytics, and performance and cost. Wow, oh, there's some really even spread out. People could chose multiples of performance and cost, top, process automation, something we talked about. Data security is really interesting. I think now more than ever, you know, historically moving to cloud has been, you know, uh, security has been viewed as an inhibitor to moving to cloud. And I think now more than ever, people are like, you know, Oracle Cloud is going to be more secure than what I can do on my own. And then you have the benefits of autonomous and everything else. So this is great feedback. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, so much for providing that. Um, so with that, I'm going to now pass it back to our host, Deanna Moffitt, to take some questions from the audience. Hey, Steve, thank you so much. Well, we have a couple of questions. I know the host answered one of them, but I'm actually curious, Craig, what you would say to this question. The question that was popped up was, um, because I'm curious, I used to be an IT project manager and I could imagine there was some fear when things start going away from out of their control. What, uh, with the use, the question is with the use of the autonomous technologies, what do you do with the teams that used to manage those tasks? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> you got them busy doing other things? <laughs> they're, busy, they're busy writing cutting edge software. Yeah, we don't focus on that anymore. Mm -hmm. we, used to have, we used to spend so much time, to be honest with you, so much time on infrastructure and that's gone. We don't spend that time on infrastructure. Once you set it up right, it's just totally elastic. It, it just grows and contracts on its own. Um, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, so that staff, that staff is uh, not doing that anymore. So now, <laughs> now, it's not that we got rid of anybody. We just focused, right. we added people. I mean, what, what we're focused on is our job is to provide cutting edge software to our customers and let Oracle do what, it's, what it does best. We would never be able to manage a database like, like the Oracle team can manage. I mean, that's what they do for a living. You know, how would we ever do it as good as they do? How would I ever provide my customer the security and speed performance costs like they're doing? I mean, so good question. How could you? You're off doing so many other big things, right? I can imagine not having to split your time so that you can really focus on what you are great at doing is just so helpful. So another question that came up was, uh, what do you use the analytics for? Is it for internal use or for your new services for your clients? Do you already answer that? Yeah, there's actually two answers for that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, because, because we are a SaaS platform, we do monitor the platform. We monitor for KPIs. We actually monitor customers to make sure they're performing well um, in our platform. So we have key KPIs. Uh, we don't that all internal to make sure that everyone's running correctly because we have a cloud ops that manages the platform and make sure that everyone's utilizing it correctly. The second piece is the customer. Think about all the data we have in our platform. In e-commerce today, you have your orders, you have your inventory, your products, you have issues with orders or problem resolutions, you have, you have uh, where are the orders coming in from, what channels, right? Uh, what addresses, who's buying what, what geographic regions, how much are they spending, how much did my shipping cost? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> you wanna know if an order's profitable. Yeah. Imagine that, you know, is an e-commerce order or, or orders that they're doing, is it even profitable? And are they meeting their service levels? Huge amount. I mean, I really feel for them, for the customers, because they have so much that they have to do to run their business. I guess we're here just to provide the tools for them to do it easier. Yeah, you're giving them this so they can just make better decisions, right? Because as you said, that overwhelming 
all that information and I'm sure like helping them point to what is for them, what are the, the KPIs? What, what do they need to know? And to have all that information just readily available to them has got to be so powerful. Majority yeah. of them don't even know if an order is profitable. I mean, imagine that you're, you're supplying it and you're not sure. Um, the reason why is their shipping data and a shipping cost though. It's really, it's really powerful to have the analytic platform there. Yeah. I mean, I'm just curious, Craig, is that something you help them with? Is, is noticing what is profitable by looking at the whole line of, of stuff that's going down the pipeline? Uh, let them? They're, they're, they're than, honestly, the customers are smarter than us when it comes to yeah. that. <laughs> For sure, in their business. <laughs> I when it comes to making money and, and hit their customer service levels, the customers yeah. are way smarter than us. <laughs> our, our job is just to provide the tools. They take it from there. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Hey, I want to come to the audience with one more poll. And this one, uh, I'm going to pop that up and we're going to ask the question, which of your enterprise systems do you need to improve upon? So just do some self-reflection in your own organizations. Where are you at right now? Is it security? Is it analytics, supply chain management? I hear a lot about that. Data management, data management, and SaaS platform. Where are you right now? What do you, knowing where your organization is at, no, it's good. It's a pretty good distribution. And I, I think the cool thing with cloud is it enables all these things, right? There's right. data management, making that more effective. Um, there's overall security, you know, business continuity and security and remote access um, is more important than ever. And, you know, Craig nailed it on analytics, getting insights into the business, whether it's Craig's insights or those insights that he can enable for those he serves, his customers. It's really interesting and we appreciate folks taking the time to fill this out. It's really good feedback. Thank you so much, Steve. Hey, Craig, I'm not gonna let you off the hook. You ready for this? So we've got a little fun part of this and I wanna ask you some questions. Now, Craig, here's your challenge. Uh, I'm gonna try and leave you to one word or just a few words. There's a couple of these questions you can't possibly answer in one word, but we're gonna try and get it down to the essence of what you wanna say with these. No, uh, we haven't practiced this. So you ready for this? How about this? What is the best part of your job? Innovation. Oh, oh, you've got it down to one word. Nicely done. <laughs> is that exciting? I, mean, I just want to ask you, is that an exciting part for you? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what makes it exciting. Yeah. I mean, we're really doing new things. That's, that's yeah. what makes anyone's job great. Yeah. Well, all right. Here's the follow-up then to that. What is the worst part of your job? Uh, I think my team will attest to that managing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> uh, great. Well, let me then skip down to a, a question. Where, what is your favorite leadership word? Actually, what I, what I talk to most people about is, uh, to our team, is solve problems. Yeah. You know, don't give me a problem. Solve the problem. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're empowering them to do that as well. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, yeah. it's thinking out of the box, solving problems, especially in our world in software, we're doing we're doing things that haven't been done yet. And there are always problems to solve, to make it better. And uh, I just, you know, we're empowering the team to provide those solutions, you know, rather than the coming from top down. I love it. How about this one? What is the best lesson you ever learned? No matter who you're working with and whether it's a customer internally, externally, just being respectful to people is key. I mean, I think for any organization and company to survive, that is the baseline, right? Yeah. Uh, how about this one? One thing you would love to tell your younger self? Slow down. <laughs> Slow down? <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. And what would you do in that slowdown time? Uh, that's the challenge. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I haven't learned. <laughs> That's okay. You're telling, still, you're still telling your younger self. That's totally fine. All right. So I'm gonna wrap it up with this one. How about this? What is the one tech trend you like the most? The word of the day: autonomous. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that it just runs on itself. Yes, exactly. That's what. That's what I like. <laughs> 
I love it. Well, Craig, thank you so much. I want to thank you both, Craig and Steve, for your time. And thank, thank you, you to the audience for joining us. We have built a great community. We're still building it. So let's stay connected. We want to keep you informed of more community-based thought leadership. And this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you, two gentlemen. If you'd like to follow up and learn more, please contact us at customer spotlight series underscore us at oracle.com. And please do tune in for our next customer spotlight featuring Motorola on June 25th. Good day, everyone, and have a wonderful Thursday wherever you are.